Doctor, go on, Snoopy. You can do it. Careful, Jeannie. Snoopy's behind you. That's it. Keep going. Yay, go on. Jump higher. Go. Hooray, we hey, won. I had enough of this. Let me out of here. Ah! Oh, so that's the way you want to play. It's my turn. Just a second, huh? Ah, ah! Hey, stop cheating! Ooh. Ah! Now we've got her! are really lots of fun to play. Sure, but computers aren't used for playing games only. Yes, I know. I use it sometimes to do my math homework. Hey, Jeannie, ask me a question, anyone you want. Okay. How much are 35 and 28? Gotcha. Watch this. Not oh. bad, huh? The answer's right there on the screen, 63. It's not hard to be good in mathematics if you do things that way. <laughs> And that's not all. Computers can do lots of other things besides math. You know everything, Alex. Give me an example. Well, let me see. All right, I know. Banks use computers. That's right, so you can get cash any time. The machines all look different, but they work on the same idea. The machine is connected to a central computer. This is a magnetic bank card. All you have to do is insert it into the machine and punch out your code. Then the computer checks to see that the code you typed out is the same as the one on your magnetic card. Once that's done, all that's left is to tell the machine how much money you want, and out comes your money. Provided you've got enough in your account, of course. Please take your money and your card. There you are! Exactly what I asked for! Wow! Hey, what are you gonna treat me to, Jeannie? And me, huh? Sorry, kids, but that's my life savings. I need it. Aw. That's a pity. I'll treat you to some more information about the use of computers. Oh, wait. We use them at train stations, too. Right again. This is what we call a reservation terminal. The information goes to the railroad's central computer, which checks to see if there's any room left on the train. And the answer comes back to the terminal immediately. Excuse me, sir, I'd like to reserve a sleeping car on the train leaving tonight at 10 o'clock. He types my reservation out on the keyboard, and off it goes to the computer. Wait, Wait a, a second, second Jeannie. Jeannie. You're not going to travel all alone, are you? You have to take us along. I'm sorry, but all the sleepers on tonight's train are taken. If you like, I can reserve coach seats for you on the same train. Oh, I'll be a wreck when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> You're too much. <laughs> Computers are also found in the cockpits of airplanes. The automatic pilot gets its instructions from the onboard computer. Businesses use computers for tasks which would be too complicated or too long to carry out without them. And in industry, machines are operated with the help of computers. If you look around your own house, you'll find computers there too. Huh? Where, Jeannie? The sewing machine, maybe. What? You're kidding. No, look, it's tiny, but it's a computer all the same. That's amazing. You choose the kind of stitch you want, and the machine sews it on the material. That's great! I imagine the air conditioning has a computer as well. You put the temperature you want in memory, and the computer does the rest. And so computers are used by banks, airplanes, sewing machines, businesses, and industry. Are the computers used in all these areas completely different, or do they have something in common? I guess they must work in similar ways, but what does a computer actually do? It's a machine that processes information. How is the information processed? A computer consists of three essential parts. First, there's the input unit, including the keyboard and the disk reader. There's the central unit, which processes the information. And finally, the output unit, with the screen and the printer. But how does it all work, Jeannie? Well, take the input unit. 
When you do a math problem, you write it down so you can visualize it. It's the same with a computer. 32 plus 28. 32 plus 28. It's as if the computer had eyes and ears to receive the information. Something like that. The first part of the operation consists of informing the computer, but not in human language, of course. No, we feed a computer punch cards. And to enter a problem into the computer, we type it on the keyboard. Right, until the day we can use the human voice to give it orders. What about the central unit that processes the information? It's the main part of the computer. It's brain. What do you do with your brain? Well, I think... I calculate. I memorize. The computer does the same exact things. The unit that processes information has three parts of its own. First, there's the control unit, where the orders are recorded. Then there's the central or core memory, where all the programs and the data are memorized. And finally, the part that actually processes all the information and solves the problem that's been posed. But... has a limited memory capacity, and when it's full, you can't put anything more into it. Unless you use add-on memories. Right, and you can stock additional data there, and take it out when you need it. Exactly! We usually record additional data on magnetic tape or on hard disks. What about the output unit? That's the part which transmits the processed information. The same way as we communicate orally or in writing. That's right! I print text or graphics on paper. Or I can show them on a screen. Oh, it's such a great invention! When were they first invented? The computer, as we know, is a very recent invention. Although, would you believe that as early as the 17th century, scientists were working on the creation of calculating machines? This one, for example, was built by a Frenchman named Pascal. One of the pioneers of the computer was Charles Babbage, but the calculator he created in 1812 never actually functioned. An American named Hollerith tried to build a machine to process information, but the first real computer didn't appear until about 1946. Believe it or not, it needed 18,000 vacuum tubes and weighed 30 tons. Wow, my little personal computer wouldn't recognize its ancestors. And sometimes a tube would burn out like a light bulb, and the calculation had to begin again. That was the first generation of computers. In 1958, vacuum tubes were replaced by transistors. That must have reduced the size of computers. Second-generation computers, thanks to these small three-pronged transistors, were a tremendous step forward. The third generation marked the beginning of the integrated circuit. It was a complicated system, but it meant that large quantities of transistors, diodes, and resistors could be put on a chip no larger than a few square millimeters. Twenty years ago, you needed an entire room. And then came the fourth generation of computers, and technological progress was even greater. These computers included integrated circuits on a large scale. On the same size chip, we can now place hundreds of integrated circuits, as well as tens of thousands of transistors. That's not a step forward, it's a jump. The tiny chips you're talking about must be what's built into a sewing machine. You mean that our computer has a chip with integrated circuits? If computers keep improving so fast, I wonder what they're going to look like a few years from now. I do, too. Why don't we go and have a look? Huh? What do you mean, Jeannie? How would you like to visit a futuristic city? Really, Jeannie? Do you mean it? I'll take you to a city where every possible function of the computer is being used. Wow, fantastic! Well, what are we waiting for? Follow me! Hooray! Let's Yay! go! Tri-Sisters!
system. I'm not a garbage pail, you know! Oh, I guess I made a wrong turn somewhere. Huh? two of you doing in there? This is no place to play hide-and-seek. Do you think she's gonna scream again? <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> Here's the bus. That's weird. What happened to the driver? Kidnapped. Not at all. Huh? huh? Look closely and tell me what you see. There's no driver. Look again. You'll see it. Oh, right. The bus is on automatic pilot. Exactly! Just like an airplane. The driver's replaced by a computer. It's like being in the middle of a science fiction story, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But why doesn't the bus go any faster, Jeannie? That's because there's a speed limit here. The computers received the order not to go beyond it. Ah. Oh, look at the cars! The drivers are all busy doing all sorts of things. Hi! Oh, hi! Hi! hi. Look, he's, he's eating and driving! driving. It's easy. The onboard computer takes care of all traffic problems for you. And safety as well. That's my kind of car. Do you hear that music? Let's go inside. What's going on? Who's playing the piano? The Invisible Man? The piano works on a computer. And to change the music, you simply reverse the magnetic card. And the piano plays something else. Listen. That's great! That's Mozart. Educational games can teach us how to play music. And even compose melodies. Remember the robot at the Tsukuba exhibit in Japan who played the piano? We saw it on TV a few weeks ago. His camera eye was able to read the composition and his computer decoded the musical notes and sent out an order which set his mechanical fingers into action. A piano playing robot? Incredible! A whole orchestra made up of robots? It is. The fruit and vegetables have awfully funny shapes. It's all automated. That's right. And all the robots here take their orders from a computer. What kind of work do they do? First of all, they put budding plants in these cartons. Then, sensors control the plant's growth, distribute the fertilizer, and regulate the temperature. The computer also takes care of the watering. And it even turns on artificial light if there's not enough sun. Robots do everything here. Can you think of the advantages, kids? Sure, that's easy. It does all the hard work instead of us. What's more, you don't have to worry about droughts or bad weather, right? And the plants are protected from insects by the greenhouse windows. And the plants get what they need. No more and no less. If the computer did all that for us, we'd be a lot smarter, wouldn't we? And much more handsome, too. <laughs> I like you as you are. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're finally home. Is this where we live? Seven, four, three, three, one, one. Wow! I think I'm gonna yeah. like it here. What's that over there? Wow! 
It's your own home computer, ready to serve you any time of night or day. I'm dreaming. I'll turn it on now. What's this? Wait, you'll see. A newspaper. Last night's edition. We can get all the world's news thanks to this telecopier. Wow. Here's the telephone. Connected to a screen. Fantastic. I can finally see the person I'm calling. That's not all. This telephone can do all sorts of other things. Come on, tell us, Jeannie. Okay. Say, is either of you hungry? Oh, I am. I'm starved. I could eat an elephant now. I wouldn't mind a steak. Well, how about a nice little restaurant for dinner? Yeah! yeah! Where are you going? Come back, kids, huh? Aren't we going out? What would you like to eat? It would be nice to see a menu first. No problem. Huh? huh? Let me see now. What's the code for restaurants? Ah, there it is. Now I'll call. Hello, this is your computerized information service. You're looking for a good restaurant? What would you like to eat today? Hot, cold, Chinese, French, Italian. Ah, uh, I think I'd like Italian food. Yes, me too, spaghetti. Okay, spaghetti all around. Can you give us the name of a good Italian restaurant? Of course. Type out your access code, please. Buongiorno, here is our menu. Well, Alex? It all looks so good. Kim? Uh... Okay, I'll order for all of us. It will be ready in ten minutes. Now that's fantastic. Incredible! The optical fiber cable that connects the home computer to the central computer can give us all sorts of information. Thanks to this connection, everyone can benefit from all different kinds of automatic telephone services by using his personal computer. To find a good restaurant, for example, you simply find the code for restaurants in the automatic telephone service guide, and the computer does the rest until your meal is delivered. That's a pretty good idea. But some of the systems we use are used here, too. They use cash windows in the same way we do. And they make train reservations in the same way, too. But you can also do all of these things with your home computer, because it's connected to many different centers. You can get the latest news and weather, or buy things without leaving home. Whoop! Aha! That's incredible! Everything is at our fingertips. That's right. Oh, it's ready. It sure smells good. Yum, yum, yum. Ah. Don't we pay for it? Sure you do. The restaurant gets the money automatically. It's taken out of your bank account. So you don't have to carry cash with you. Not here. Well then, since it's all so easy, dessert is on me tonight, okay? I want chocolate ice cream. I'll have a banana split. Sorry, your account is overdrawn. What? Oh no, I don't believe it. What am I going to do? Kim, dear, could you lend me a few dollars? <laughs> wow, that was a fantastic meal. It's time for my after-dinner walk. See you later, guys. Hey, I want to go, too! Mm. Oh, this must be where the automatic telephone services are. I want to see what they look like. Maybe afterwards, I can teach Jeannie a thing or two. Ah! An electromagnetic barrier! It's forbidden to enter this zone without an identification badge. I've got nothing on me, sir. No ID badge, huh? Out you go! Yes, okay, I'm going. Please don't be angry. Where's your pass? Okay, you're all clear. Oh. I wonder what Alex is 
doing. He's been gone an awfully long time, Jeannie. Oh, I wouldn't worry. He must be enjoying himself. I hope he's not lost in the city. Maybe he was kidnapped by a robot. I'll bet you he's playing video games. <laughs> I wonder why this door is locked. It must be the central computer room. Entrance forbidden. What are you doing there, young man? Huh? Me? Nothing. I, I was out for a walk. Who are you? What's your name? Uh, I'm just a boy. <laughs> a very nice one. Where's your identification badge? But I don't have one, sir. You don't, hey? Now, that's very interesting. Come with me. But uh, I was only... You're a little too curious for your own good. I didn't mean any harm. Honest, let me go! Oh. We'll see if you're telling the truth soon enough. Come. Ah, let me go! Let me go! Oh, let me go! Call Jeannie. She'll tell you I'm not lying. Ah. You can stay there for the time being. Let me out! Please, let me out! 